All right, guys, another story time video, but a little caveat on this one. This story time is intended for adults, okay? We'll just leave it at that. Um, I know that's not going to stop kids from watching, but I just want to get out there. This is a mature story. Um, yes, and I'm not going to explain what things mean or, uh, you know, get into detail about things. Just I'm not going to get into super detail just because I know that there are kids who watch anyway. You say you can't watch, they're, they're not going to go, oh, okay, mm. and like click off of it. Of course they're going to watch it. It's the internet. But you know what? It is the internet, so I can't feel bad about talking about something that may be dirty because you can't escape dirty here on the internet. Anyway, so yeah, let me just put that warning out there. Adult story time, okay? So uh, it's been so ridiculously heavily requested that I do the glory hole story. I should have never have mentioned it because uh, people are now like really, really curious about it. So here's the glory hole story. This took place the first night of our trip. Me and my grandfather, I mentioned the other story time video. We went out, did a Northwest trip, you know, spent a whole month on the road. The first night, or the, uh, yeah, the, the first night, we've been driving all day long, okay? We got all the way out to, from Northeastern Pennsylvania to the Western part of Illinois. Okay, so we're on the Illinois border, stopped at the truck stop that was there. And this is late at night. This is, we got there probably 11.30, 11.45 p.m., something like that. Now, I had no expectations as to what was going to happen on this trip. All right, I had no idea. It was just pack your bags, you know, bring some spending money that you have, and let's go. You know, he didn't tell me any plans. There wasn't supposed to be plans. It was supposed to be completely whatever we felt like doing, which I have to say overall was awesome. It's the only trip or vacation I ever took in my life that did not have an itinerary. Most of the time when I took family vacations, went to like Disney World or whatever, and we like, oh, we got to see this, we got to see this, this, this. It turns out to be a job. You want to experience so much that you end up working at trying to have a good time, you know? So biggest suggestion I can make if you're going to have a family vacation or something don't have a single expectation just go out wherever you happen to be traveling to and just wing it because you will have the best time of your life and don't feel bad if you don't see everything too many people spend too much time with the itinerary and making plans and this and that and the other thing and like getting every minute of the day packed in so you can see everything at once don't do that that's work that's not relaxing that's not fun you may plan something for one day and then the weather's bad and you end up doing it anyway and then you don't have a good time, you know, it's just wing it. I had the best time of my life just winging it with him, except the first night. So we pulled up this truck stop and we already pulled, uh, so far we visited like every welcome center for the state, which I think are really nice. There's a lot of nice ones out there, like really a lot of money and time and design went into these places. Some of them have like marble floors with like a map of the U.S. and really, really cool places. So we stopped. It's the western part of Illinois, and uh, it's a truck stop. It, it's not like a full visitor center. It's more or less like a bunch of tractors parked and like one facility with a bathroom. That's it. When you first walk in, there's a couple of vending machines uh, and then just a bathroom, men's bathroom, women's bathroom. So we pull up into the rest stop, and he shuts the car off, doesn't say anything at all. It's quiet. I'm thinking, all right, he's stopping to pee, right? Like he... Old man, he's got to pee, it's time. No, 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 no. Uh, doesn't say a single word. Stops the car, gets out of the car, goes in the trunk. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, when he got out of the car, I'm thinking he's going to go and take a leak and we're going to be off to the motel, right? Wherever we're going to stop. No, 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 no. No motel the first night. We're sleeping there. I didn't know this until he came back with his pillow. Get back, got back in the car, put the pillow on his, uh, you know, behind his head, lowered the seat, turned to the side, like away from me, and then just like try to go to sleep. And the whole time I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, no, no, I'm not, I'm not sleeping at a truck stop in Illinois. <laughs> it's funny. I do say Illinois. I, I say Oregon, which people cannot stand. It's Oregon. There you go. All right. You'd think I'd say Illinois, but I don't. Anyway. Um, so doesn't say a word to me. I go, uh, Grandpa, we, what we doing? You know, we, we sleeping here? Because I really thought we'd go in a hotel. Now, I at this point in my life, I've only slept in a car. 
two or three times and it was horrific. You know, I, I'm not, I can't just like fall asleep places unless I'm like just dead tired. I have to be in a bed. I have to have a pillow. If I don't have a pillow, I can't fall asleep like on my arm or I'm just I'm kind of weird like that. I have to be exhausted to just pass out anywhere, you know. But he's like, no, 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 you know, we're going to save money the first night. I'm not going to, you know, buy a room. Now, meanwhile, I don't have any money for a room. It's not like I can say, oh, well, I'll pay the first night. I have nothing. So I can't argue with this logic. You know, he's doing the trip. So I'm like, oh, my God. All right. I'm thinking this is horrible. I have to sleep here. And at first, I'm not thinking anything. What's to come? I had no idea what was to come. Okay. I was more or less thinking like, this is probably dangerous. We're probably going to get robbed sitting here. Now, again, keep in mind, way before I got into guns at all, I have a knife on me, okay? At that time, I had my Voyager X2, which I took on the trip, which is a massive folding knife, six-inch blade. It's a beast, okay? But I don't still feel comfortable sleeping at a rest stop. And I'm still, you know, I'm not young or anything, but I'm not really at the mature level I am now. Not to say I'm mature now, but you know what I'm saying. I was a little less mature. And it's just, it didn't seem like a good idea at all. So now I'm getting nervous, all right? Now, during the day, um, we didn't really eat much, all right? So towards the tail end, like I, I didn't have breakfast. We just got right on the road. Um, didn't have anything for lunch. So by the time we got, uh, we got to a restaurant, we ate for dinner, which by the way, was the best place I've ever had uh, meatloaf, okay? And it was some kind of, um, not Amish, it was Mennonite. Something like that. There were definitely, you know, bonnets going on. There, there was something something up with these type of people. Not that it's a bad thing, but definitely an Amish-like people. So, but the food was like awesome, awesome. It was twice-baked uh, meatloaf, which I've never had. I've had like twice-baked potatoes, but it was just phenomenal. And I ate way too much of it because I haven't eaten all day. So I have like a half a meatloaf sitting in my gut like a stone. So now I'm getting nervous. We're, we're sitting there and I'm like, oh crap. So I, I lean back in the chair and I didn't bring a pillow, okay? Because I'm thinking we're gonna stay in motels and stuff. So I can't get comfortable. I can't fall asleep. I'm tossing, I'm turning. He is like out like a light. I snoring, farting, all, all kinds of stuff like within five minutes of us stopping. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, oh crap. Every single time someone walks past the car, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like looking and very intently at every single thing, every shadow. I'm like waiting for someone to like, you know, slam on the window with a gun and say, give me all your money. So by the way, a little side note, my grandfather um, didn't do ideal traveling and that he carried uh, an enormous amount of cash on him. He did not believe in like credit cards, nothing like that. He had about six or seven grand in a bag with his gun, okay, which I now own that gun, the, uh, the Beretta Bobcat. That was it. It was like a handbag. It looked like a doctor's bag. It had a chain on it. And, uh, and that, yeah, he had an enormous amount of cash and a gun. He just didn't believe in cards and stuff like that. So not a great situation to travel in because if someone stole that, that would pretty much be it. He has no backup plan at all. I guess in him, but his mind, the backup plan is, no, I will just take my gun out and shoot them as they're trying to rob me. Anyway, I don't know what his thought was. I can't, couldn't tell you. But I, at this point in the trip, I already know this. So I'm, I'm just envisioning someone coming and I'm like trying, I'm playing out all these scenarios in my mind that slam on the window. Oh no, they like got us outside by gunpoint. My grandfather, oh no, I got money, pulls the gun. He gets shot. I get shot. Like I'm thinking of all this stuff, right? Meanwhile, my stomach is just making all kinds of noises. It sounds like, I don't know. It, 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 it sounded like you were punching a huge bowl of pudding, okay? That's the kind of noise it was making, which is it's not a good noise. And, uh, and I'm starting to get a really bad stomach ache. I'm nervous. I ate too much. Ugh, I can't fall asleep. I'm tired. I'm like starting to get dizzy because I'm so tired, but I can't fall asleep. And so I'm like, I got to go take a dump. I have, I have to go take a dump at this place. I don't like going to the bathroom. In public. At this point in my life, I had a very big problem going to the bathroom in public. And that should be for a whole nother story time, but I'll give you a very short version of it. Home Depot, 1996, I believe, when my family was building an addition on the room. Um, as a young boy, went to use the facility, went to go take a young boy crap. And some old man, not old, old man, but like, because I'm young, old to me at that time, it's like, I don't know, 40, comes in. Totally not shy, you know, blowing a big load next to me, taking a dump, 
load, please. Um, and uh, he, he reaches his hand underneath the stall and he says, hey buddy, you got some toilet paper? Now, being a young boy, I'm already not happy that I'm taking a crap in a public stall. Then to have a stranger's little sausage fingers come under the thing. And, and I, at first, I didn't understand what he said because it was kind of mumbled. And I really thought he was going to like grope me. That's it. Turtle head went right back into the, into the cave and I was out of there. I ran out, never saying anything to my parents. It was just a weird moment. And I, I la you know, later contemplating what happened, I realized he was saying like, oh, you got in toilet paper. But you don't just, you don't do that, okay? Even as an adult, I wouldn't accept that hand under this. No, that's like the privacy is that wall. You don't just go stick in your hand. You don't know what I'm doing in there. Maybe I'm bent over naked, you know? You don't want to just go whipping your hand in the unknown. Regardless, I don't go to the bathroom in public since that point on. So for literally years and years, I would just have a stomachache all day. I wouldn't take a crap in public. So anyway, I'm sitting at a truck stop in Illinois. Bad stomachache. At this point, it's like maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And uh, I called my parents and I said, Grand and uh, no cell phones at this time. My grandfather didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone. It's not like they, there weren't cell phones. We just didn't have any. So I had to go to the pay phone that was there. Luckily, I had some change on me. Call my parents. I said, look. And, and I woke them up because they're sleeping. It was a normal work day for them. My dad answered the phone. And he was real upset because like, I, I woke him up in the middle of the night. It's the first night. He's like, oh, what, you know, what's going on? I thought it was an emergency. I'm like, dad, I got a crap. Grandpa's asleep. You know, he didn't go to a motel. We're sitting at a truck stop. <laughs> I'm like, I got a crap. He's like, what do you want me to do? Drive out there, drive you home, take a dump? He's like, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. <laughs> he was nice about it, but, you know, it's 1 o'clock in the morning at this point. He's got to get up for work. I can understand why he's angry. So I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I called him. I'm like, oh, well, all right, whatever. I hung up. And I think, all right, I got to do it. I got to go use this restroom. And I'm envisioning, I'm envisioning the most disgusting scenario. I walk in there. Okay, didn't tell my grandfather about anything yet. He's, he's just snoring, okay? I'm thinking, I just have to go do it, right? I walk in there. Now, as I walk in there, I literally am clenching my Voyager in my hand. It's out of my pocket. It's not open, but it's in my hand, and I'm, like, sweating. Because, you know, like, when you get a bad stomachache and you start to sweat already? Now I'm really, really nervous. I, and I'm thinking I'm going to walk in there, and it's going to look like some kind of a banded sewer, you know, like just disgusting crap everywhere. I walk in, and it's actually really nice. It's nice and clean. Right. I mean, like almost sparkling clean. So I'm like, oh, like that's a that's a relief. And I think oh. and I put my knife in my pocket like, oh, it's not as bad as I'm making it out. I'm making this big deal for nothing. I open the first stall and there's a tampon. I use tampon. This is the men's room, by the way. A very um, juicy, let's just say, tampon stuck to the side of the wall inside the stall. I immediately dry gag. Blech. Um, you know, I can't smell it or anything, but it's, it's there. It's presence is known. No, 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 not using that stall. Sorry. So uh, now I'm starting to get grossed out. It looked like it was a nice clean bathroom. It's starting to paint an ugly picture for me. I opened the second stall behind door number two, a huge load of crap in the toilet. No toilet paper, by the way. I mean like a monstrous elephant sized dump. Not a, not a shred of paper. So whoever left this, I don't really know what their plan was. Uh, I don't know if they wiped. I don't know if if they did wipe, did they take the toilet paper with them? Where is it? Where could it have gone? It, it's a very um, scary and confusing experience to find that situation. Uh, I'm like an, an abnormally like non-human sized dump. Uh, it, could have, it looked like almost like a collective dump, as if multiple people had contributed to this existing collection. It was very, very strange. And But the no toilet paper hit me immediately. Usually you'd find like a mess and like a huge wad of like a, like a whole roll of paper towels. Nothing. No paper on the floor. Nothing stuck to the wall. Just no paper. And on top of all that, the paper dispenser, the huge roll that looks like, you know, like a truck wheel, that thing was filled. There's paper hanging, so it's not like they didn't have paper available to them. So now I'm really, really confused, disgusted, very disgusted. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. And at this point, like, I'm ready to just 
it's it. It's coming out. You know, I have to either go in the sink or I have to suck up and use one of these things. Finally, the third stall, door number three, is that handicap stall. Now, usually the handicap stall is the most used because it has the most uh, most room, and generally speaking, it's the cleanest. So, but now I'm thinking, all right, well, with the two surprises I found thus far, this has to be like a disgusting mess. All right, I open the door. And just a quick glance, at this point, believe me, I'm about to crap in my pants. I cannot wait any longer, not another second. So I just bust in. The second I open the door, it looks nice and clean, right? There's like graffiti on the walls, but there's no toilet paper stuck to the floor, all right? Ran over the toilet. There's nothing in the bowl. It's clean. I'm like, all right, fine. This is it. I'm doing my business. Whip down the pants. I mean, didn't even undo my belt. Just muscled it down over everything, okay? Around the ankles, sat down, let it fly. Ah. <sighs> Huge load of relief. I mean, just I felt like the pressure in my stomach. Just it's like someone opened a valve, and, tss, and I felt a lot better, like instantly. <sighs> then, then I happened to look over at the wall next to the toilet, which I did not notice coming in, by the way. And there it was, staring me at the face, a glory hole. All right, so at this point, I'm going to explain what a glory hole is in the most mature fashion, okay? A glory hole is basically a hole in a wall or a divider in public in which someone sticks their penis through uh, to be pleasured by a stranger. That's the, uh, the most mature way. I don't think anyone's ever explained what it really is in those terms. Yes. Uh, and that's what it is. It's basically for strangers to enjoy each other. So... Yeah, so I, I just happen to just glance over as I'm taking a dump in Illinois, and I see this hole in the wall. Now, immediately at this point in my life, uh, um, I don't want to say perverted, but I'm exposed to everything sexually. Seen it, seen it all. There's nothing that could, at this point, even being a little bit younger, about 18 or so, there's nothing that can surprise me. I, I've been on the internet for so many years now. There's literally not a single thing that I have not seen at this point. So I know clearly what it is right off the bat, like just immediately, boom, whoa, no. All right, it's there. Uh, and, I, and the second I see it, I mean, I know what it is and it's all registering in my head. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not really there. I'm completely in denial that that's there, okay? But then I realize very quickly that, yes, it's very much there. So now I'm mid-crap. And uh, I have to get out of there, okay? Because I have this enormous fear, like a literal, not a worry, not like, oh, I really hope that, no, no. I'm very fearful, sweaty, nervous that someone is going to go into the stall next door. And by the way, this hole does go between the dividers on door number two, remember, with the huge crap. But I must have been so, like, I don't know, blown away by the no toilet paper and huge collective pile of crap that I didn't even notice it on that side. And there is quite a quite a good amount of graffiti on the walls too, so it didn't stand out right away. Anyway, so now it's there. There's no denying this. This is very much real, and it's about, I don't know, eight inches from my face, okay? The hole in the wall. And um, so I'm like, all right, I gotta go. This is it, I gotta go. And uh, I just, I tried to do one last, like, push out before I kind of wipe and clean up. Yes, this is this is very disgusting. I, I realize that now. Um, you wanted to hear it, so here it is. This is, I mean, there's no censoring here at this point, obviously. This is what it is. So I'm like, all right, one more, one more good one. Knock it out of the park, clean up, and get out of there, right? I'm cleaning myself up, and I hear one of the most devastating sounds I've ever heard in my life. The door opened to the restroom. Okay, very squeaky hinges on the door. Clearly, that noise is the door opening. So I'm finishing, I'm cleaning. Okay, front to back, always. Don't forget that, it's a good little tip. And the door opens, I go. <gasps> that basically sums up my whole thought right at that moment. <gasps> you know. Uh, I pulled up my pants. At this point, I'm, I'm done, I'm clean. Pants go up, and the first thing that happens is my knife comes out. I open my knife, okay, it comes out of my pocket, and I just kind of whip it open. So now my knife is open, I'm standing there behind the door, and I'm trying to 
muscle enough courage to just walk out of the place. But I really don't know what to expect. I'm, I'm, in my mind's going a mile a minute, and I'm, I'm thinking of all these very strange, unrealistic scenarios that are going to happen. Okay. But I'm really freaked out. I'm genuinely scared for my life at this point. All right. I tuck the knife. I have like a grip. Let me show you. I happen to just have this fixed blade here. This is not, it's about the size of the Voyager X2. But basically, I took a reverse grip like this and I lined it on the inside of my arm, just like that. So if you're standing straight and your arm's down by the side, you can't see the knife. It's completely hidden. So I have my Voyager X2 up against my arm, just like that, to my side. I open the door, I take like a big breath, I'm like, whew. I open the door, it's this little old man, totally harmless, must have been like 90 something years old, little old man, pants all the way up to his chest, suspenders, thick glasses, I mean, very stereotypical old guy, um, still have my knife out, and at this point I have a little bit of relief, but I'm still like, I'm thinking, all right, old man, you make a move, you're getting it, seriously. I walk past him with my knife in my hand, ready for anything that's going to pop out. I get to the door. He gives me a hello, too, which, like, I, I, it's a man thing. If you're walking past someone in the bathroom, uh, you just do, like, not, not a full-blown, hey, how you doing? Shake a hand. No, that's not it. Guys, we just do, like, a, a nod thing. But he's an older man, so he doesn't give that cool, like, okay, yeah, this is an awkward situation nod. He just goes, he goes, hey, just like that, an old man voice. Hey. And uh, I'm like, hey. And I, I walk out of the bathroom, my knife ready to go at any point. By the time I get outside, I'm looking around, there's shadows everywhere. I'm still freaked out until I get to the car. I get to the car, um, I close my knife, I put it in my pocket, I take a deep breath. All right, now I feel relief, but like my heart is pounding in my chest. I mean, really going like crazy. And uh, I shook my grandfather. I'm like, Grandpa, get up. <laughs> he, what, 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 what? I'm like, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't sleep here. You know, I really can't sleep here. I, I can't get comfortable. I'm begging him, please, can we go to a motel? And he says, no, no. You know, I, I'm, and, and he's starting to get mad. He's like, you woke me up to tell me you can't sleep here. He's like, just man up. You know, we have a long trip ahead of us. We're going to stay at motels most of the time. Just, you know, sleep it off. So at this point, again, very, um, old school kind of guy. I, I can't argue with it. I'm just like, oh. and I sucked it up and I lay down. I tossed and turned for another hour. Finally fell asleep. When I woke up and I cracked my eyes open and I saw that it was light out and then like, we're going to start our day. I can't tell you how much relief I had. It was really one of the worst moments in my life. I had genuine fear in my, in my mind, in my body. Um, it was just, it was a very strange situa situation. Obviously while it was happening, it was not funny in the least bit. Looking back at it now, it, it can almost be, uh, you know, a scene in a movie. It was really, really funny after the fact, even like a couple days into the trip. Um, never told my grandfather, did tell my, my dad when I got back from the trip and he was cracking up he's like, oh, that must've, that must've been scary. Like joking around. I'm like, no, really. I was scared. I was very scared. I told him like, I had my knife out and everything. He's like, Good thing you didn't stab the old man. Uh, he was making light of it. But it, at the time, it was a very serious thing. So anyway, uh, I'm sure a lot of you would love to have heard a different version of the story where perhaps someone did make a, an appearance of sorts. Uh, no, unfortunately, that did not happen for you for the story. Fortunately for me, it wasn't like that. So no, I was not um, violated in that sense. Uh, but the, the whole experience, it's funny now. It really was really, really scary at the time. It was just an extremely nervous, genuinely fearful time in my life. And, and one of the most uncomfortable dumps I've ever unleashed in the state of Illinois. Actually, come to think of it, doesn't Tex live in Illinois? Hmm. <laughs> Nuts or Fancy also lives in Illinois, I believe. Anyway, um... That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, as always. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.